I don't have it in this binder. What are you trying to ask? Number seven. Loaded like a stress element. Loaded like a stress element. Yasa. Um, ooh. So for number A, uh, it's not a number. For part A, um, it asks for a stress tensor. Skip that. We haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, that's the next thing we're going to do. Uh, and B. is also about stress, skip that. Yeah, sorry about that. That just ended up in the wrong problem set. Yeah, skip seven. Skip that. What? Uh, no, I think there's enough other problems in the next assignment. And then for eight, that comes up in eight too, but not the whole thing. Uh, so number eight, um, yeah, you can do A, but skip B through D. Permanent. Oh, yeah, right. These are all, I'm sorry, I take all this back. You can do all this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just asked me if it was permanent. Just get a new piece of paper, Jesus. Class has been going for like 30 seconds. Kids today act like paper is like, our most prized resource. Throw it away and get a new piece of paper. <laughs> People are all like, they'll like take some notes over here and then like make a box around it and then they're like, here's my biology notes. And like, just, it's all right. Paper is cheap. So back to seven. What am I asking? Um, yeah, that's sort of a okay, loaded like a stress element element, uh, num part A, um, there's no difference between the top, bottom, and middle. That's probably, I probably copied that from a different assignment where we'll see that there are some kinds of loads you can apply to beams where you will have different stresses at different places in the cross section. But when you're just dealing with trusses and you're just dealing with tension and compression, it's the same everywhere. Um, so the top, the middle, and the bottom of the cross section all have the same stress. This is really true for B too.
OK. Does that answer your question? OK. So yeah, that's that's not a thing in this, but it will be a thing coming up. And if I had, um, if I had included the weights in this, then it wouldn't be a truss. And you would get slightly different stress tensors at different points in the cross section. And so that's what we'll get into. That's sort of the next subject we'll cover. Any other homework questions? Yep. Could we have calculated the maximum shear stress for number two? Problem number two? Oh, the beam number two. Um, well, we can't do that because um, that member is not just in tension and compression. They're bending moments and stuff. If you, uh, so this is the one, so first is seven, and then this one's eight. Um, so in this case, uh, we have loads that are like this. Uh, I don't know. Um, and they have to be. Uh, so the rules are for this to be in equilibrium, these forces have to be along a line from each other. You know, they have to go along this line and they have to be equal and opposite. But if you did an internal loads calculation of points in here, you'd see that they're bending moments and I guess just bending moments. Well, bending moments produce stresses. So I guess the answer is kind of like this. Um, Cause this isn't straight. Um, the external loads cause bending moments, cause a bending moment. And you can think of the, um, the stress tensor, total stress tensor, at any point is equal to the stress tensor due to tension and compression. That's all we've dealt with so far. Plus the stress tensor due to shear force. Plus the stress tensor due to the bending moment. plus the stress tensor due to the torque, due to torsion, okay? And so um, all we know how to calculate so far is the stress tensor due to tension and compression. If we have any of these other, and, and so that, so all the other problems in this set, uh, these are equal to zero, okay? But if you have these three things, any of those, uh, you're going to also get stresses due to those, and we don't have a way to calculate those. Okay, not yet. But one by one, we're going to we're going to start going through how to calculate the stresses due to this and this and this. And once we know how to do all of them, then in a lot of cases, we'll just be able to add them all together. Any other questions about that one? Any other homework questions? Yeah. Uh -huh.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we can get that from the. Um, so, does it give you a material type? Okay. So, we still know. Uh, so, this is principal stresses. Number 13. Okay, so we know that the compliance matrix has this form, 1 over E, negative nu over E, negative nu over E, 0, 0, 0, and, you know, we know the form of this. Um, and so what's the stress answer that it gives us? Okay, yeah, great. Five, negative five, zero. Okay, okay, uh, ten. Okay, in megapascals. Okay, so let's see what happens when we multiply this by the by the compliance matrix. So compliance matrix. I guess I'll fill out all these values. Um, so 1 over E, negative nu over E, negative nu over E, 0, 0, 0. Then negative nu over E, uh, 1 over E, negative nu over E, 0, 0, 0. Negative nu over E, negative nu over E, 1 over E, 0, 0, 0. And 0, 0, 0, um, 2 times quantity 1 plus nu over E, 0, 0. And then that term keeps moving along. And then we're going to multiply this by the stress tensor, 5, negative 5, 0, 0, 0, 10. And let's just see if there's anything we can figure out about the deformation. So the first equation says um, that the xx stress is equal to 5 over E uh, minus negative 5 over E plus all the rest are zeros. OK. And so what you get is 10 over E. And so E has to be positive. And so therefore, EXX is positive. Uh, yeah, it's not as simple as that, but it same way, uh, right, negative 5, nu, and so this is, five plus five, nu, and this is also positive. Okay. So anyway, EXX has to come out to be positive. There's, there are no numbers that can make it negative. 
And I assume it'll all just sort of keep working like that. Um, when you get to the third one, yeah. So even though you don't know numbers, uh, by multiplying by the, the compliance matrix to the stress, uh, you can figure out the signs of all these values. How much those, like how much elongation or contraction you get and how big the changes in angles are, uh, that totally has to do with what the material is. You know, if it's silly putty, it'll be a lot. If it's steel, it'll be not much. Nope, not necessarily because, um, because of the Poisson's effect. So if you had, so like for example, um, if you had a very, you can say that about the shear stresses. You can say that for sure about the shear stresses because there's no Poisson's effect, but if you had um, a tiny little, let's say, positive stress here, 0 0.001 or something, okay, that would be positive, but the Poisson's effect from this one would be bigger in the opposite direction than this one would be, okay? So you have to be careful with those normal stresses, making assumptions like that. Um, but the shear stresses, you can make that assumption, yeah. Any other homework questions? Yeah. I have a question about mm -hmm. um, when we did the last time we went mm -hmm. and we Okay, so that was the one where, um, so what we basically knew was that we have a line that uh, cross the x-axis at one, right? And went up to a value of a thousand at two, right? And we're trying to come up with the y-intercept. Um, well, we know that y is equal to mx plus b. We know that the slope, so this is a thousand. We know that the slope is a rise of a thousand over a run of one. So this is equal to 1000x. Why did I write a five right there? Uh, mx plus b. Um, now we have to figure out what the what the value of the b is and we can do that by just choosing one of these points uh like when x is equal to one y is equal to zero x is equal to one so b is equal to uh negative 1000 and so the equation for that line is y equals 1,000x minus 1,000. That's right. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Well, let's go back to this example from last time. All right, so what this example problem looked like, you had a pin joint over here. And a two meter long beam with a roller at the middle. Uh, 
Um, the mass is 50 kilograms. You have a distributed load. of 1,000 newtons per meter at its highest point. Um, and the dimensions, this is a meter, this is a meter. We needed two cuts. Cut one was for X values between zero and one. We got the functions T of X is equal to zero. V of X is equal to negative 245.25 X minus 333.3 three, three repeating. And M of X is negative 122.625 x squared minus 333.3 three, three repeating times x. And now we're going to cut two. And this gives us the x values from one to two. Um, the free body diagram Once you represent all the distributed loads as point forces, we have a downward force of 333.3 .3 repeating. Uh, we have the force from the weight, that's 245.25x. Uh, we have the force from the roller, that's 132. 123, oh, 1323.83 repeating. We have the downward force from the triangular distributed load. Yeah, 500x squared minus 1000x plus 500. And we know that the distance between these two points is x minus 1 over 3. And then we have the internal loads T, V, M, and torque. All the torques are all zero on this in this problem. Um, OK, so Newton's second law. One, two, three, four, five. Um, we have zero, negative 333.3 repeating, plus zero, negative 245.25x. Now this, um, the quadratic uh, function here is downward. So you have to multiply this quadratic function times the unit vector zero, negative one, right? A unit vector that represents the direction of that arrow, basically. So this all comes out being switched. You have zero for x, and then for y, you have negative 500x squared plus 1,000x minus 500. That's a very easy place to get mixed up. Um, and then we have plus T zero minus zero negative or plus zero negative V. Uh, I'm going to combine these into one. So T minus V, that's fine. They're happening at the same point. And those are equal to zero. So plus zero, uh, 1323.83 repeating, plus T negative V, 
is equal to zeros. T is equal to zero. V is this super complicated thing. Um, so it says V is equal to negative 500 X squared. Uh, and then the X term is 1000 X minus 245.25 X. So that's uh, 750. 4.75 x and uh, then the linear terms the the constants are minus 500 minus 333.3 repeating plus 1323.83 can someone add those up for me plus 490.5. And now the moment equation. I'm gonna choose this as the about point. Okay, so first of all, well, the whole length of this piece is X. So the 245.25x represents the weight. Um, so what's the moment arm for that weight force? X over two, yep. So we have 245.25x times the moment arm x over two. And then would that cause a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation? Clockwise, so this is negative. And the next one we get to is the 1323.83. So 1323.83 repeating. And what's the moment arm for that force? One, that's right. And would that make it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Counter, so that's positive. And next we get to the ugly one. Um, what's the moment arm for this polynomial function? X minus this thing. So uh, let's so three X over three minus this is two X plus one over three. So we have um, the magnitude of this, 500x squared minus 1,000x plus 500 times 2x plus 1 over 3. And would that make it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, so that's negative. And then we have the two things we always have, plus m minus vx is equal to zero. Um, okay, so uh, this one comes out to be negative 120. What is it? 122.625 x squared plus 1323.83 repeating minus, uh, yay, yay. Um, okay, I'm going to first. I'm going to hold on to the one third and uh, I'm going to go 1000 X cubed minus 2000 X squared uh, 
plus 1,000 X uh, plus 500 X minus 1,000 X plus 500 X plus M minus VX is equal to zero. Okay, so negative 122.625 X squared plus 1323.83 repeating minus 333.3 repeating X cubed minus 666.6 repeating X squared uh, plus 333.3 repeating X plus 166.6 repeating X. No, not yet. Um, Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh no, this 500 should be x squared. Pay attention. Yes. Okay. 166.6 repeating x. Where are we? Minus 3. Thank you. Minus 333.3 repeating X plus 166.6 repeating plus M minus VX is equal to zero. And now uh, we have only one of these. We have three of these. Uh, we have uh, linear terms, we have two of these, we have constant terms, mm. two of these, okay, so minus 333.3 repeating x cubed. Uh, minus, so can someone add those three terms together? For the squared, negative six. Oh yeah, because those, right, okay. Sorry, I, I'll never doubt you again. 622 point what? 625. Um, and then uh, what do you get for the linear terms? Oh, zero? They just cancel. What? There is a VX, yeah. Okay, those cancel. Does that make sense that those cancel? I don't know. And then uh, for the constants? Point four three, um, and then plus m minus vx is equal to zero. So m is equal to vx plus all this stuff. So m is equal to where's our v? V is this thing. So we have negative 500 X squared seven fifty four point seven five that should be VX so that should be cubed pay attention if the derivatives don't match 
we're doing it all over again. Um, and then 754.75 x squared, and then 490.5 x, that's plus, right, yeah. Um, and then all of this stuff is the opposite of that because we moved it over to the other side. So we have plus three, three, three X cubed plus 622.625 X squared minus 1490, let's call that 0.5. And, all right, so what do you get? M is equal to, uh, we got two of these guys. Um, two of these. And you know, linear and a constant term. So negative negative one sixty six point six repeating x cubed, and then plus. 1377.375x squared plus 490.5x minus 1490.5. Okay, so. Um, these three functions are supposedly uh, valid for the interval x from one to two. DMDX, I don't think this is gonna work, is it? Uh, so three times 166 point, you know, I'm taking DMDX is negative uh, 500 x squared. Well, that one works. The next one isn't gonna work though. We added something where we should have subtracted or something. So uh, this comes out to be wrong. Then we do have the 490.5. So something went wrong here. It's kind of inevitable. That's not. <laughs> no. Uh, anybody have any questions about that? Okay, let's do the quiz.